I uh, wanted to take a quick minute and talk about a question that I hear quite often as it relates to how to raise money when you're uh, starting to invest in commercial real estate. And I think the question is, is um, it's a good one. Um, and I'll answer it kind of a little bit differently than I think uh, most people answer the question. And that is first, we're going to give you three strategies, but, and, and the first strategy is like, who are you talking to? And what I mean by that is if you're talking to the right investors, uh, investors that in my experience are already making good money, uh, at their jobs or in their businesses, they will have a much higher appreciation for someone else that actually goes out and finds the deals to bring to you, um, or to them, I guess. And, and in exchange for that, they're quite happy to pay reasonable fees, right? Whether it's a syndication fee, money you're gonna earn up front, uh, money that you're gonna earn throughout the project, uh, those could be asset management fees, and then the splits on the back end. So all of those combined are gonna be the money you as the principal in the deal or the general partner are gonna earn for putting the deal together. And I think what happens with uh, new investors is if you're going out talking to other real estate investors, they they feel that they should be getting some of that um, because in their mind they were they they kind of feel like um, they have the expertise to be able to do that. So why aren't they making it? Um, and so what I would say is focus on investors that are going to put value on you bringing the deal together, um, executing on the deal, and uh, making sure that they're protected. The next one is um, kind of a mindset. Uh, uh, to, to keep in, uh, in into consideration, if you will. And what I mean by that is some investors are going to be scarcity and some are gonna be abundant. And the scarcity investors think every dollar you make uh, is a dollar out of their pocket. Whereas an abundant investor, which are the type of investors that I have, and I've been very um, kind of blessed to have them in my deals, and they and, and they say this to me, they're like, Shane, like you did well on that deal, right? Because they know if I do well, then I have staying power and I can keep going out and finding more opportunities. The more opportunities I find and bring to them, the more money they make. So it's it's quite interesting when you're dealing with like high net worth individuals, people that have a lot of money, they understand that it's very difficult to find good people that they trust, that can find good deals, that execute, that say what they're gonna do. And so when they find someone like that, and in their mind, at least uh, I, that's what I've been told from my investors, I'm that person for them. And so they're very happy that I make money because it means that they're gonna make more money. And so they're always asking like, hey, you did good on that deal, right, Shane? Uh, I mean, I was just out golfing with one of my investors the other day and, and he was asking that same question. He was just you know, ecstatic about the last um, uh, investment that paid out and looking forward to the one that we've got right now. So so abundance versus scarcity, very important. And then the last one is just like having proper expectations. Um, I think what happens is uh, new investors see uh, maybe someone like myself or even people that are doing it at a very high level, um, real estate syndications in commercial properties that is, and they think, well, I should be able to do the same type of deal that Shane's doing or the same type of deal that Grant's doing or, or whoever it happens to be. And the challenge with that type of thinking, unfortunately, is if someone has a 10-year track record of paying you know, double-digit returns to their investors, then it's the, the, the demand for my services goes up and the supply of deals, maybe it stays the same, maybe it goes up, but maybe it doesn't go up at the same rate as the demand for the type of deals, the demand for investors to come into my deals. Um, when you're starting out and you have no track record, uh, it's gonna be harder for you to attract investors to you. And so I know even when I started out, I had to offer a lot more in exchange for investors to come into my deals. I had to incent them to say, yeah, you know what, Shane, um, I'm gonna take a flyer, essentially, right? You have no track record. Um, but I like you and I trust you. And so I think that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. But, uh, instead of giving you $200,000, I might give you a hundred thousand dollars. So now if I need a million dollars, instead of having to go to five investors at 200 each, I'm going to have to go to 10 or maybe I got to go to 20 at 50. So 
that just requires more bandwidth and more uh, communications, conversations, and investors are going to push back. They're going to ask a lot more questions. Uh, literally now when I go in and, and raise money, it's uh, very short conversations, text messages sometimes, um, uh, but it's because I have that track record. Uh, if you're meeting someone for the first time, you're not going to have that option. You might have to meet with them four or five times. They might want to see the deal uh, various different ways. They're going to test you. Um, and, and I think that that's just important to have those kind of proper expectations when going in so that you're not uh, discouraged when there's um, challenges or pushback. So uh, I think that that uh, is really what I wanted to touch on today. Um, just kind of going over like who your audience is, who are you talking to, uh, the mindset of your investor, obviously your mindset is just as important, and then having proper expectations. So if you have those kind of three uh, pillars, if you will, when you're going out raising capital for your uh, syndications, I think that uh, that's going to be uh, very beneficial to you and helpful. Um, uh, so anyways, if you have questions, uh, as I mentioned in yesterday's uh, video, if you would prefer to send me direct messages or uh, private messages, uh, I don't know how, how it works uh, specifically on Facebook, by all means do that. And then what I'll do is uh, I'll I'll, if, if you'd like, I, I can keep your, um, uh, your name private. And what I will do is I'll just uh, essentially kind of take the question and I'll answer it just like I did this time uh, without um, calling anybody out because I know some people are a little bit nervous as it relates to social media and, uh, and having their name out there. They don't want to seem foolish or they're just kind of, they just prefer to be anonymous. So I, I, I totally respect that. And like I said, um, if you have questions though, I'm here to help and I want to be able to answer those. Uh, I want to continue to do these kind of Q and A's uh, on a daily basis. Might start taking weekends off, we'll wait and see, but I'm having a lot of fun doing this right now. So uh, right now, I'm just gonna keep, um, keep um, pounding these out on a daily basis and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, have a great day and we'll talk soon. Bye for now.